Hi, hello, I'm Bear, and today I've realized there's a lot of questions in this world that continue to go unanswered. Why do we dream? Is the universe infinite? Why do cats purr? And as a follow-up, if cat girls were real, would they purr as well? I'm asking for a friend. But the one question I've had on my mind for the past few days, besides the last one, is what is the circle packing algorithm and what is it good for? The answer may surprise you. Nah, I'm just kidding. I have no clue besides the fact that it looks cool. And besides, I wanted to try to challenge myself to see if I could write it. Maybe there is some practical application that some huge geometry nerd can use to solve Kepler's cannonball conjecture, but as someone who programs for fun, it seems kind of useless besides looking really cool. And yes, I did learn about Johannes Kepler from a Veritasium video and it made me feel smart, so sue me. But me? No, I just wanted to write another pointless algorithm to make myself feel... something. And that something was joy. Just look at this shit. Tell me that isn't the tightest shit you've ever seen. <clears throat> Anyways, I started where all good projects start, in unity with enough caffeine pumping through my veins to make my leg do the little shaky thing. But where do I start, I thought. Well, I figured the first thing I should do is at least get the circle spawning and growing within a confined area. Easy enough. Spawn some circles, give it a random location within the camera bounds, then use a coroutine and a while loop and let the circles grow over time. And I don't really know what I expected, it kind of looked like I was speedrunning to a game over in Pokemon. So after whiting out, I woke up in the Poke Center and realized I didn't quite like all the circles spawning at once, so I went back to the code like a desperate teenage boy throwing rocks outside of Visual Studio's window and added another coroutine to regulate how the circles spawned in. So now, even though the circles would grow forever, I at least had a starting point. Next, like the huge nerd I am, I used some vector math to calculate the distance between each circle. Kind of a pain. Look up the distance formula for vectors, do some math, plug in the numbers, add it to the algorithm... Oh wait, fuck, I forgot. Unity has a built-in formula for this. <sighs> I always forget that. Let me retake it. Next, like the intelligent programmer I am, I used vector3.distance to calculate the distance between each circle, and I totally didn't waste 30 minutes doing math for no reason. I can now compare the current circle's radius plus the other circle's radius to check if it is less than the distance between the two center points. If it is less, then I can let the circle grow. Otherwise, the circle stops growing. Also, I could use the same code, with some tweaks, to check if the random location that the circle is instantiated at is within the radius of another circle, thus preventing overlap caused by circles spawning within each other. And oh yeah, baby, look at her run. And I would be totally stoked about this if it didn't run slower than an arthritis-ridden grandma competing in the local mud run. And just like grandma, this slow pace had me all hot and bothered, and not in a sexy way. So I optimized. The details are unimportant, but if you are in my shoes, here's the three things that made me go from 15 frames a second to a constant 60. 1. Break from your loops when continuing is redundant. 2. Circles that can no longer grow no longer have to be checked for growth. And 3. At startup, create locations and add them to a list that the algorithm can pick from instead of letting it pick just any random location. You could then remove these from that list if a circle is going to overlap or if a circle was already spawned there. I also added a variable to essentially let me downscale the number of locations the algorithm can create. A uh, link to my GitHub is in the description if you want to check my code out. With Grandma now being replaced with an Olympic athlete, I needed a direction to steer the project. Originally, the idea for this video came from Daniel Schiffman over at the Coding Train YouTube channel because, no surprise, after 8 years and 1100 videos, if you can think of it, Mr. Schiffman has done it. In his video, he used a text image of the current year and a more innocent time in human history, 2017. What he did was pull the pixel values from the image and let the circles spawn only where the white text was, essentially recreating the image out of circles, which is really the reason why I wanted to do this. But he used JavaScript, arguably a much better suited framework for visual projects such as this. Don't at me. So like a puzzle missing a piece, it was somewhat tedious finding the right combination of forum threads to assemble the right information. Turns out, all you need to do is create a game object out of your image, get a reference to the sprite through the sprite renderer, and grab the sprite's texture. 
Then, all I needed to do was iterate through the texture's width and height and grab the value for each one, adding it to a list along the way. Simultaneously, I could use the iterator and the texture's dimensions to create two normalized float values and then multiply them by the camera bounds, thus creating a list of locations that the algorithm can choose from. Figuring that out only took about as long as one lo-fi and chill playlist, so I felt fairly proud of myself. By the way, if you haven't listened to Loon, I'd highly recommend it. While playing his songs Bleu and Sos La Nuit on repeat, I hopped on the iPad and drew this little doodle, and it was extrêmement relaxant. Why am I showing you my art like a kid going to his mom hoping she'd hang it on the fridge while speaking French? Well, while I can't exactly explain the French, let me just play the clip. In my version of the algorithm, I didn't want to be restricted by color, choosing to ignore black or white values or somewhere in between, because in that situation, yes, only text makes sense, but in order to recreate images themselves, I chose to ignore the alpha channel and let each spawn circle sample the pixel color instead. And as an ode to the video that inspired me to write this code, here's an updated version of what Daniel Schiffman created in his with a minor tweak. Yeah, as you could tell, I learned the circles can be anything, which led to some interesting examples. With the challenge complete, any self-respecting person would pat themselves on the back and say, f*** it, good enough. But just like my addiction to raisinets, I don't know when enough is enough. I kept thinking back to John Conway's Game of Life and started considering ways to make the circle packing algorithm more reactive to its neighbors. For example, I channeled my inner preschooler and couldn't stop thinking about bubbles. What if the circles popped when they touched another? And though I was entirely way too lazy to add a bubble popping animation, I think it turned out pretty cool, but I wasn't satisfied. My program was running way too well. What if I made it worse and for some reason shy? I don't know, I originally wanted to write a version that felt alive in a way, growing and shrinking when they touched one another. But for some reason I can't get past the idea that these things are like, sorry bud, bumped into you a little there, and just shrinks down to nothingness so it can gather its courage again. And that's it. Check out Daniel Schiffman's video in the link in the description, and then try to write the code yourself, it's super easy. If that sounds more uncomfortable than stubbing a toe, a github to my code is in the description below as well. Thank you for watching. My next video is 100% going to be on machine learning because apparently I have YouTube ADHD. Like, comment, and subscribe down below. If you do, then you are entitled to one free sexy call from myself. Okay, bye.